it looks like I believe Texas and a couple other places are talking about um unmasking. Yeah, we're so gonna talk about like, that with the okay. good news and the bad news. There you go, <laughs> which probably an excellent transition right now. So I'm gonna throw it right to you. Why don't you go? I'm, I'm gonna catch it. <laughs> you did a hell of Mary. Know the pass. I let me man. <laughs> give it to me early. Okay, so we're gonna start with the bad news so that we can discuss more about the good news on what C just talked about. But the bad news is hundreds of Nigerian girls were abducted. So Nigeria is in West Africa and its population is over 2 million people. Nigeria is the most populous and economically developed country in Africa. Unfortunately, hundreds of girls were abducted last week by gunmen from the government girls secondary school in the town of Jagibi. This is the second time in a week that armed men with guns had kidnapped and kidnapped the children in Nigeria. The girls abducted were ages 10 and up. On March 3rd, though, over 279 girls were freed and returned to their families. Each child appeared physically okay, except for some having some open uh, sores on their feet. One of the girls said, we walked across a river and they hid us and let us sleep under shrubs in a forest. Nigeria has had several kidnappings in the several years recent years. The most notorious was in 2014 when over 300 girls were abducted by the jihadist re rebels of Boko Haram from the secondary school in Chabak and Barona state. But more of a more than a hundred of those girls are still missing. Hmm. Wow. So I see uh I see this uh mm -hmm. image right here, classy lady. What was mm -hmm. this in reference to? Did they have some type of uh you know was this you know the, the the center was this you know where was this at and what was this about that was actually the school that they were that they attended so mm. what you see is the, as the girls in their schools that's oh, wow. before the abduction just giving you an overall as to the massive young ladies or young girls who were stolen and abducted wow Wow, wow. Yeah, and when they talked about the open sores on their feet, they were saying that if they walk slow, that the gunmen would shoot at their feet. Oh, wow. A lot of them were barefoot, mm -hmm. and it seems also that it years ago, and like I stated, that they were notorious for abducting the young girls, um, and it was totally back then for more um, Western education, but more recently, it's now about ransom money in regards to Nigeria just being parts of it very poor. Wow. Yeah. That's just so sad. Oh my gosh. You you gotta love on your babies. You know what I mean? And and I I hate to see things happening to little kids, little innocent kids, and also to um elderly and animals. It drives me crazy. Like, you know, people that aren't able to protect themselves. But, you know, we got to, oh, my gosh, it's kind of like just reminds me of like a, a Harriet Tubman movement movement with the youth, you know, with right. the kids, these girls just, you know, trying to get them out. Yeah. Horrible. But the thing is, is why I see how the U.S. involves themselves with so many other things. It just seems like, again, when it's, you know, black babies, mm. and black girls, it's not as much movement or involvement as it should be. Like why are the why are they still being abducted? I, I know that's not our country, but what more can what can we do in the U.S. to help prevent that? You know, exactly. somebody said, uh, "Follow the money." Mm. You know, that's what they say. Follow the money. Uh, do you see any money behind that? And if not, maybe uh, that may answer your question as to why certain people are not involved, right? Right. Um, it's unfortunate that everything is surrounding money, you know, it's fiscal, everything is fiscal. And so if we can't follow the money as it relates to that, you know, what, what, what is the benefit of the American government? Right, right. You know, we'll talk till we blue in the face. You know, we supposed to be, be protecting those babies, right? Mm -hmm. We supposed to be protecting those babies, right? We don't say nothing when somebody like that is 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 kidnapped. You know, when we talking about hundreds of little girls, right? Black and black little girls. But uh, I can remember not too long ago, you know, the news was on fire when, you know, uh, uh, an American 
young man was taken and was, you know, pretty right. much planked because he was acting like a plain jerk in another country. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. But we got him back. Yeah, We got him back. And a lot of people were talking about it and it was all, all over the news. Uh -huh. True. No. True. Yeah. 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 Jeffrey Dixon says from color. And now even talking about this, I took uh, Sizzle's advice and watched Amend. And now putting these together and knowing, you know, I didn't do as good in history or, or geography as I wanted. But now as a grown woman and now having a lot of these teachings all over again and hearing about the 14th Amendment, and I'm just like, wow. And then they ask us, why does Black Lives Matter? Yes. But you know what? The history part, um, that's not totally your fault because in school, I remember just thinking that like black people evolved from slavery, but I never, it wasn't until I started getting like a little early, um, little older. I'm like, so what was before slavery? And as a kid, it, it only thing I learned about in history in, in school was that we were slaves and that was it and the civil rights movement and just only what they wanted you to know and i struggled for so long trying to figure out like where do i come from like what's my identity like what's my um heritage and all that because i didn't learn that in school so it it you know the high schools i mean the schools they drop the ball tremendously but you know they only let you know what they want you to know and if they want to keep you um suppressed they don't want you to know that you came from kings and queens you came from royalty at some point we were rich and we had wealth and the black wall streets and all that they don't want you to know that and there's so many of our um our um white counterparts that are like what are, what is Black Wall Street. Why have I never heard of that? Why do you think you've never heard of it? Mm -hmm. You know, do do your research. Do your research. And 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 that goes for us too, because our younger generation, we have to worry about them and them not knowing um, you know, because when we were younger, we learned about the civil rights movement. But as we gotten older, our younger generation, they're not learning about the civil rights movement. What they know now is like the Black Lives Matter protests. And that's what they relate to more now, you know, but we got to, we got to learn them. You know, like they say, we got to learn them. Each um, one teach three. Yes. Yes. Three. We got to teach 30 now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's so much. It's so much. Gosh. Before you go on to the next story, <clears throat> I think it's important to, I want to piggyback off of something that, uh, Sizzle said, especially as it relates to the visuals that you see when you're young. And when I was young, the only visuals that I would see, uh, and it's unfortunately, unfortunately, I used to wish I wasn't black. Mm. I used to wish mm. I wasn't black. I used to go certain places and see uh, my white counterparts um, appear as if they're having more fun. Um, they're having more resources. They're financially more well off. I used to literally wish I wasn't black. Mm. So when I would turn on the TV and see hearing that my ancestors are from Africa, the motherland, so to speak, all of the movies that I would see would be like a Shaka Zulu. Would yeah. be uh, Roots. Roots mm -hmm. right? um, movies like that. Or you know, if I'm up late at night, I would see, you know, the, the the videos or commercials, the PSAs with the little, you know, uh, black kids with big bellies with flies flying all around them and, and saying, you know, you can support a child with a couple cents. These are the only images that I would see of my people. Mm -hmm. Not until I got older that I realized, like, what? Yeah. Uh, and and, and you know that was intentional. Yes, no, that's no. that's the hypnotizing part. Social so um media sensationalism is 
intended for that. Just like what you just said, and I said that's deep, yep. Just like when you said about that as a black male, that's what little black girls went through. We couldn't find toys, little black baby dolls. You couldn't, you had to play with Barbie that was all white, Ken, all white. So things that we, what, who we are, had to be taught in the household, had to be taught by the coaches, the teachers, to, and the, the, the parents to say, yeah. love the skin you're in, mm -hmm. love who you are. You know, like, I, and, and even within the black community with colorism, my oldest baby is, is more chocolate than my caramel babies. And when we moved back home, it was like, mom, they're saying why, my baby was like, mom, why are they saying that just because I'm not as light as my sister? You know what I mean? So a lot of that is what was told to us from even the white people making us believe that the lighter skin is even better. So it's like, okay, if we can't even make you think that white is right, then even in your own community, we're going to make you think that the lighter complexity is even better. So I know I diverted off a little bit, but all of that is so mental from the videos, from the movies, from the television. And it's, it's like, now that we're considered woke, we need to make it better as 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 black communities now that we know. Because when you know better, you're supposed to do better. You do better. Yeah. You know better, you do better. At least you're supposed to. But that's why I'm um, uh I was super excited to see major movies start to come out that's showing uh African ancestry different. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, you have yeah. uh our you know, children, little kids watching movies now like Black Panther. Oh, and they yeah. want to be Black Panther. Mm -hmm. When I was growing mm -hmm. up, we wanted to be Superman. We wanted to be Batman. There mm -hmm. was no other Black characters that we associated or felt that essentially when we grew up, we could be like. Mm -hmm. Now you got Black kids saying, I want to be Black Panther. You got yeah. little yeah. white kids saying, I want to be like Black Panther, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about showing images right that's the one thing that we, we underscore as it relates to what we talk about as we thought weekly is media literacy mm -hmm. nobody explained those images uh nobody you know uh tell you you know that this is the reason why they're showing you these things right yes now mm -hmm. you can understand what's the reason why mm -hmm. they are showing you these images right but now we're able to see it. But I'm glad to see little boys and little girls saying, I want to be like, you know, Black Panther. I want to be, I want to be, be the next Black Panther. Imagine that. Imagine yeah. little girls saying they want to be the next Black Panther. Or little girls saying, I want to be like one of the warriors and cut off my hair. How about that one? Mm -hmm. wow. When you were wow. told that your hair wasn't good enough, that you yeah. need straight hair. Yeah to yeah. look beautiful right and so yeah. seeing and understanding these images is really important and, yeah. and we have to do and talk uh uh with intention mm -hmm. and yeah. know that what we're saying there are people who essentially will be watching and so we got to make sure that we say the narrative that's important to us and our people yeah and us as as us as parents that's our job you know what i mean to to instill you know those uh uh what's the word i'm looking for morals and 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 values and things like that into our children um we it's like you know it takes a village so even when i come across other people's children i'm telling them like you're a queen you're a king you can be this and that and you can do you know you come from royalty and, and you can do whatever you want to do. But uh, real quick, back to your point, uh, when you mentioned about, you know, seeing the stuff that we even saw in Africa, I remember last year I was helping my son with a homework assignment and he had to, um, he had to watch this video. And I think it was like maybe 10 or 11 minutes long. And it was a Ted talk from, uh, um, I think the young lady is, her name is Ch Ch Chimamanda, she's from Africa, but it was called The Danger of a Single Story. And um, if you get a chance, like parents and people at home, like if you get a chance, let your uh, show this to your children. But um, they were just talking about this lady, um, this young lady, she used to write stories and stuff 
um, when she was a little girl and she was in Africa, but she would write, write about white people. And um, because over in Africa, I guess that was all that she saw at the time, if I'm getting the story correctly. So she was assuming that, you know, everybody over here was whites and like, you know, all that stuff. So that's all she wrote about primarily in her stories. And then she came over here to the United States and she went to college and she had a white roommate and the white roommate thought that she was so poor and, um, you know, just couldn't imagine how she lived in, in, in Africa, but she, her family was well to do in Africa. So it was a misconsumption, um, a misconception of what was going on over in Africa, just like we see now. It's like, we don't know that it's beaches over there and it's beautiful yeah. and stuff like that because we don't see it on TV. And, and that's what the white people were assuming about the Africans is that they, you know, they were poor, they were hungry and they, you know, like, like the commercials you said. And you're right. And do you know, just to, just to add to that story, do you know how many people I know that have their own business, but don't want to be the face because they, they're considered, they're the owner. So they put the face of someone else, usually a white person, um, in regards to new, dated this guy, owned his own barbershop, high end barbershop. Guess who was in the front of his uh, window? A white person. Why? Because they knew if it was owned by a black person that it would that his black dollars are different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he wouldn't even tell people that he was the owner because of that. So to yeah. what you said in regards to when you're walking in the store and somebody's following you just because you're black, you think mm. I'm a steal? You know what I mean? Mm. So that's we, go, we look, we're gonna get to that in the sizzle. Okay. Get to that. So hold, you know, for everybody that's watching us right now, stick around because we're going to talk about that. And and um, I would love for people who are watching it, watching this uh, Facebook Live to kind of comment and, and share your stories so we can discuss that also. But that's when we, you know, when we get to the sizzle. Okay. All right. All right. So y'all ready for some, um, some little good news, depending on how you look at it. So the good news is the mask mandate is lifted. So as we all try to get to a new normalcy post pandemic, many states are lifting the mask mandate. 35 states plus DC and Puerto Rico mandate face coverings in public. But as of recently, five states have lifted the mask mandate. Montana, Iowa, North Dakota, Mississippi, and now Texas. And these decisions coined as Neanderthal thinking said by uh, President Joe Biden, Texas Governor Greg Abbott declared, we are ensuring that all businesses and families in Texas have the freedom to determine their own destiny. Meanwhile, Mississippi's Governor T uh, Tate Reeves said that he was getting out of the business of telling people what they can and cannot do. Now, if you're a governor, that's what, that's your job. But anyway, he said he's lifting the mask mandate in that state. So what are y'all thoughts on that? That's wild. <laughs> yeah. People tired. That's what I'm hearing. Governor, mm -hmm. people are burning the candle at both ends and they tired. Like, how are you going to say you tired of telling people what they can and cannot do? you the governor. That's what yeah. you paid to really do. But I mean, I get it, but also I'm like, it's a way to go about it. You know, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with people, um, especially in leadership positions, you can't have a, a, you know, a panic. You gotta have it where things are weaned in, you know, and then weaned out. So it yeah. has to be where, okay, we'll, we'll um, lift the restrictions or, you know, make a more relaxed setting. But mm -hmm. when you just go, you know, free, free, free balling. <laughs> yes. I mean, you going you gonna get people that's gonna be all they go. It's gonna be it's gonna be mayhem. Yeah, I I actually when I heard that news, I actually had to think long and hard about it because I'm like, so what's what's the point? What's the point? And 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 you know, of course, my mind. I'm and I'm such an an analyst like i over analyze everything which is is my problem but i was just sitting there thinking like because you have um you know it, even if you think about how 
we didn't want to get the vaccine. Like a lot of blacks were saying like, and, and, and there's a history behind it, which people don't understand. Like mm-hmm. we were experimented on, we were always the guinea pigs. So, you know, it, it, it's a history behind it. So there's a reason why we were not jumping to the front of the line to take this vaccine. So I was just thinking about how, if you go to a lot of places where the vaccine is being uh, distributed and, and administered, a lot of um, our white counterparts are in line. So when they, when I heard about this mask, like they're like, oh, you don't have to wear masks. I'm thinking about who's that going to affect because the white ones are being vaccinated. They're the, they're the ones that are jumping in line and getting vaccinated. And, you know, they will have to worry about it less now that they're vaccinated. We're the ones that are saying, like, I'm not getting the shot or whatever the case is. And we're not getting in line. Right. Or we have it to where, um, you know, they we're we're not it's not being distributed. Um, it's just dis- disproportionately being distributed in the African-American community where, you know, it even if it's in the African-American community, there's like a um, they may give it out at a part where there's less blacks. Or so, it, it's it's so many different things that are going on, like in different com- black communities. Um you know, so that was my thing. And I'm just like, who's that going to affect? Like, I was just kind of like, okay. Yeah, no doubt. I don't know. That's just me. I overanalyze everything. So no, like, that's cool. But just real quick, I just want to bring up, um, shout out to Naeem real quick. I want to pull his uh, comment up because, you know, um, first I want to say thanks, my brother, because, you know, it's, it's when we talk about support, right? Um, especially when it comes to, you know, people who look like us. Support is merely just telling somebody who and what we are or what we do. And I seen a comment that came in and said, yo, Naeem, what's this? This brother said, we talk weekly, all black talk show. Mm-hmm. And so oh, yeah. I just want to, I mean, I yeah, yeah. So I just want to give him kudos for that. Cause that's the type of support that we talk weekly needs. That's all it takes. Someone to just tell somebody, somebody to just tell the story, tell a narrative, just share what's going on. And what generally happens is, is you have people that feel so intimidated that they don't want to pass the word to share the word. And it's going to take a lot of that so that we can start, not only we, we talk weekly, but as a people start making that pivot so we don't have to feel like You know, the only way something is right is if it's white. Mm -hmm. Right. And now back to the narrative of how we used to feel as a people when we as an African was like, oh, my God, I don't want to be. Or at least for me, I used to feel, you know, and it's unfortunate for me to even say that. It's like I used to not want to be black. I remember telling my mom, mommy, I wish I wasn't. I wish I didn't look like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and, and there's so many little boys and girls that used to feel like that. But it may be little boys and girls looking at us and saying, oh, I want to be like the sizzle. Oh, I want to be like Sparkle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And take the narrative and start supporting that narrative. So I just wanted to say that real quick, man. Um, uh, Jeffrey yeah. said we can do better supporting each other. That's right. And, and Jeff has been a constant support. And so um, this brother author, and we'll be bringing him on the show within the next few months once we get another opening. But just kind of want to give uh, kudos to Jeff also. Go ahead, Sizzle. So yes. See, I just wanted to piggyback off of what you said um, right. about our platform. And um, a lot of there are a lot of platforms out there. And the thing the the thing about our platform is that we continue to support the black community first mm-hmm. and foremost. And, and that was you know, the foundation that this platform right. was built on is to support the black community. So black businesses, black uh, entrepreneurs, black uh, artists and, and all that. So that's what this platform was built on. And that's what we will continue to do no matter how far we get or how, how we get. That's what we'll continue to do. And we as a black community need to realize that there's room at the table it's room at the table for everyone and and we need to get rid of that that crab at the bottom of the barrel mentality and i hate to always say that 
because you know other other it's not existing in other cultures and other races um, a lot of times they are pretty much helping each other out and there are some in the black culture that are you know when they get to the top they send the elevator back down that's but right. you know and, and that's us and that's what we do so you know we will continue to hold up we see them big we all we got <laughs> and we, the just the child yes. of, we are the poster children of diversity equity and inclusion exactly Exactly. We, are, uh, we are the poster children for that. And as long as we see the marginalized continually continuing to be marginalized, we're going to continue to fight for them. That's exactly. And, and, exactly. Just, and just to add to it, Sizzle, when we have our white counterparts listening and they're like, oh, well, what about other races, ethnicities? It's not that we're saying that we're not going to support them or telling other people not to support them. But if you've watched Good News, Bad News, I've given tidbits of how the black community is way further down. And the only way we're going to be in the race, we can't catch up, but at least we can at least be in the race. Black, the black wealth gap for black family households is about 20, 17 to $20,000. The white household is at $170,000. If mm. fact, check me if you don't believe it. So I, when we say about supporting each other, we're saying we support each other in regards to saying, hey, we are so at the bottom that we need each other to pull us ourselves up. Mm. So that's to just saying buy black, support black, because we for so long haven't been in the race. Yeah. Okay. Last question before I, I close out the uh, good news, bad news. Are you guys going to wear your mask if it's if the if it's lifted in the state of Pennsylvania? Hell Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't, I don't yeah. want too many people in my face anyway. Coughing and hacking and all that crazy stuff. Like, nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um... so you gonna be wearing it way after the whole? You gonna still be walking around in twenty twenty three with your mask on? Say. I mean, I don't know about 2023, but I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> 20, 20, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, I think the funny, my man Come said, hell yeah, I'm going to wear my mask. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, th I think the funny thing is, uh, hmm. you know, you, I think the trauma is already there. The yeah. trauma is already there. So you already have that scar of feeling are understanding what this pandemic is doing and wear a mask to protect you. So I know for a fact, if I'm in a, a you know a, a place with a lot of people, I'm sure I'll probably put on a mask. It's no, mm -hmm. it's, it's no, it's no question about that. Listen, mm -hmm. C got OCD, right? Y'all mm -hmm. laughing about 2023? This man gonna be having his mask on in certain events in 2023. I'm gonna take a picture just to prove it. Yes. <laughs> Cope said he's gonna be in them COVID streets. My man said definitely yes. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be wearing those masks. I know that's right. Um that's right. well that was go. your that was your good news and your bad news from Classy Lady Spark. And that was the good news and bad news, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy Charles Bragg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle. The beautiful Classy Lady Sparkle. And uh this is WPPMLP Philadelphia 106.5 FM. We talk weeklies after the talk. And uh don't go anywhere when we get back. We gonna have some. We gonna talk a little bit of music. I think we're just gonna go into the music. I want to hear about some music, some of the new things that's coming out. And uh, we'll be right back, y'all.